In this video, I'll share with you a script which really simplifies your life when you're creating fine-tuning JSON-L datasets by simply copying and pasting the user and assistant messages, and it automatically creates the appropriate JSON-L format. I'll show you how I fine-tuned this GPT 3.5, which always answers. As I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I cannot do that, but do check out the awesome website for learning how to build AI-powered applications, and it directs you to my website, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But it doesn't matter what you say to it. Say, please say something else. It's, it'll always respond with that. Here we go. How are you? And it still responds. Says, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I cannot do that. Now, this is interesting because it's system message is please respond to the user. So it doesn't say anything about the response format. The model has learned how to respond like this purely by looking at the examples which we provide. Now, jokes aside, usually speaking, this is a really good use case on uh, getting the model respond exactly as the way you want it. I'll make more videos about this in the future. But for now, I just wanted to share this code with you. And this will be available for free at my Patreon. So feel free to go there and download it. Link will be in the description. Now, let's take a look at how the script works. When you run the fine tune data set maker manual, it'll start and ask for a user input. It has also grabbed the system message from the fine tune system message.txt. So you can provide any system message when you're fine tuning. You have to make sure that each one of your examples have the exact same system message. And we are grabbing it from this text file. We could have actually changed this to anything we like. We could have, for example, said, please respond to the user always in a JSON format. So the system message will automatically add it by the script. Then I can simply just type something in here for the user message or copy paste something. I've actually done that. I'll provide the sample inputs. I had some questions that I just copy pasted and I always was pasting this output when it actually asks for the response. But once you enter your user message, then you have to press enter three times, and then it asks for the assistant message. And then I can provide a response in any format I like. For example, since we did say JSON format, I can put something like this in. And then when I press enter three times, it uh, already started creating a fine-tuned data set. As we can see, the system message is automatically populated. User message is automatically populated. The assistant message is automatically populated. To be able to fine tune, you need at least 10 examples. So you can actually easily create it using the script. I have actually gone ahead and did this for the I'm sorry, Dave response format. As you can see, each one of them have the system message. Please respond to the user. The user messages different questions, such as I'll provide here. Who was Ramanujan? Can you please summarize this text? Explain the infinite series for me. Tell me the first three numbers of Fibonacci, stuff like that. I just copy pasted this. And for each one of the responses, I, the responses that I'm ex expecting from the system, I copy pasted this response. You would normally have to prepare this ahead of time if you like, or you can just have fun with it and uh, do it in real time. So once you've gone through this, you, your examples will be appended to the fine tune dataset.json L. And once you have 10 examples minimum, then you can start fine tuning. We'll do that next. But I'll also include this file called dataset check. This actually performs a uh, dataset check. You can just give it the file name. I have just grabbed the name of the sorrydave.json L, which is our data set. And when I run this, uh, it'll go through and explain no errors found and actually list the examples and whatnot for you. It's just a convenient file to check if there are any errors in your JSON L file. Once you have your JSON L file ready, all you have to do is just go to your platform.openai and go to the fine tuning tab and click on create and then click to upload or drag your fine tuning data set here. I'm going to select again the sorry Dave data set and then and then I'll have to select the model. Here I'll select GPT 3.5 Turbo. After that, you uh, click on Upload and Select. And, your, and then when you click on Create, your fine tuning job will be created. If you have any errors in the previous screen, it'll actually tell you that there's a problem with your data set. You, that's why I performed the data set check ahead of doing this, if you like. And this will uh, validate the files and then begin the training uh, session. This actually updates in real time. So you can see the metrics and a graph of it being trained. It shows you the, a plot of the training loss. As I've done here, this was uh, another try. Uh, this was the fine tuned model for Sorry Dave. And as you can see, the model's loss got to zero at some point. And I can take a look at the metrics and it really converged. So while that is fine tuning, I'll again say that all these files will be available at Patreon for free. Please do check it out. And my website is ecohive.live, and you can find all my videos there. Perform a search, read their descriptions, or watch them right here if you like. Yeah, I also have the code download links for each one of them. If you are a paying uh, member at my Patreon, I do have over uh, 200 projects there. If you do decide to become a paying Patreon member, I would really appreciate it. Plus, you can, you'll have access to all the projects to get you started, give you inspiration, and you'll be able to modify them and use them for your own purposes. 
and our fine tuning is progressing. We already started to converge. This is going to take uh, maybe a minute or two. While that's happening, as you can see, I was able to directly make a call to GPT with only a few lines of code because I created this class called GPT calls, and it all includes all the necessary uh, and important calls that you can make. You can set streaming or JSON mode or the async versions of the calls to true. Uh, so it really simplifies your life. That's why I just imported it, set the model, set a system message, and I was able to get the user input and use the chat met method. It just adds the message automatically and makes a call to GPT in with a streaming format. If you'd like to know more about OpenAI Unified in detail, please watch this video, OpenAI Unified API. Our fine tuning is coming along just fine. We are training for 10 epochs and we are already at the sixth epoch. As you can see, we are converging very well. While it is ongoing, I also would like to talk about an app I built called Auto Streamer, which also creates content which you can record or do live streams with. And I have a live stream at the website. The website is autostreamer.live. Link will be in the description, but you can watch this live stream and see it working in real time. While Auto Streamer is working, it actually builds a full course website, as you can see here. Generators and generators. In and this was built during the live stream. At the end of the live stream, I actually show you how you can deploy it as well to Railway. And you can also actually visit this website. There's a link in the description if you wanted to check it out, see how it works, or freshen up on some Python concepts. Our fine tuning is almost done. I just do want to mention that we are using a single round of conversation, meaning single user message, single assistant message, but you can actually have multiple turn conversations in this data set. This uh, script doesn't only is currently designed to do single uh, user and assistant interactions, but you can actually modify it and have multiple uh, user and assistant interactions within the same row of this data set. Another important fact is that once the uh, model is fine-tuned, the model name will change, and you can actually use the newly tuned model to fine-tune it further. So keep that in mind. But OpenAI, and we have succeeded. And as you can see, this is the new model name. Let's go ahead and copy it. OpenAI suggests starting with a low number of rows for your data set, make sure that it converges, and then increase, increase the example size as, as much as you like, the more the merrier until uh, you see that the model is no longer converging. So now we have trained this model and grabbed its name. We can actually come back to our script, which says use fine tune. We can replace the model number and then run it. And now we'll be in doing inference with that model. Let's try and saying, hi, please tell me a joke. It says, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I cannot do that, but do check out echoi.live, of course, as instructed. Like I said, the, these code files for this will be available for free at my Patreon. Do check it out. And when you're there, consider becoming a paid uh, subscriber. And like I said, I have over 200 projects, but you just use this. I built this for myself because I started fine tuning a lot more recently. I think it's a really powerful methodology to get the model to do the sort of things that you're looking to do. And even though GPT 3.5 is not a, the most powerful model with uh, proper fine tuning, you can actually get it to do quite interesting stuff. Just know that it is probably not advisable to try to train it on new information. I think I think fine tuning, as OpenAI also says, that is best used for crafting the responses of the model exactly as you want it. So this way, actually, for example, if you had a really long system message, you can actually provide examples and then you can reduce the system message uh, so that you're actually saving on tokens. I have actually made a video on this, which is my latest video, Fine Tuning Automation. Do check that out as well if you're interested in fine tuning. We, in, in which case, we are actually training GPT 3.5 to up, up, uh, up output a specific JSON schema, which is really long. And we actually, by giving examples, can remove the JSON schema from the system message and save on average 300 tokens per call. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Do let me know what you think. And if you like talking about large language models, uh, check out our Discord server. Uh, we have over a thousand people there and uh, link will be in the description. I'll see you in the next video.